So today we're going to be talking about the NEARS monitor and going through the setup uh, for the monitor itself. The NEARS can be found in the 7 Southeast equipment room. Um, and basically, so you can bring it to the bedside, turn the monitor on, it'll go through its own self-check um, and bring you to this new patient screen. So what you can do is use the toggle switch here uh, to go through and scroll through your options and then you press the toggle to select. So we're going to select a new patient in case. Um, and what this brings you to is actually uh, where you select the patient's age and weight. So today we have a patient who's older than 18 years, so we use the toggle switch to select that. And then greater than 60 kilos. Um, channel 1 is our default channel that we'll use to do the monitoring. So that's selected for left brain, which we'll use for all of our patients. Um, as we can just to have some consistency as far as the reading and the measurement. So we can go ahead and use uh, the left brain. And then channel two here says unused. Um, it's pretty uncommon to be monitoring from both channels or both sides of the brain. Um, so we can, if you look here, it says the recommended foresight sensor is a large um, for this patient. And we can go ahead and select done to clear that screen. So then what we have basically is the uh, sensor cable here. Um, which connects to our near sensor. The sensor can be found in the Pixis supply room um, across from bed space four. So we've selected the large sensor as the monitor um, has indicated for us and it will actually not let you use anything but the large sensor um, once you put in the patient's age and weight. Um, so you go ahead, you can connect those into the black cable itself. Um, we can just leave this in the bed for a moment. Uh, you wanna make sure that the cable goes up to the monitor and is um, in the monitor tightly. If it's disconnected, you just smash it and kind of push it in, you'll hear it click. Um, once you connect the sensor, um, it'll ask you to make a connection between the sensor and the monitor, but first we wanna put it um, connected to our patient. Uh, so what we'll do, we said that we'll typically be using the left brain for um, these patients. Uh, so you want to go ahead and put the sensor about a finger width above the eyebrow. So we would do something like this. If um, you need to beforehand to protect the skin, you can put a tegaderm down. Um, and what that actually does is as you're taking this off and checking it, um, it kind of protects the skin from that, the adhesive, and also helps the adhesive last longer for the monitor itself. Um, so that is in good position. Once we have that connected, it's going to say um, press sensor start, uh, which you would use this button all the way on the right, which um, will go ahead and search for that signal. Um, and you can see in between it says it's acquiring the signal. Should be acquiring the signal. Um, and it's also giving us a warning about ambient light. So sometimes if the room is too bright or there's a lot of sunlight, it'll alarm. And then typically what we would do is cover up the sensor. Um, but you can see it's kind of actively searching for the signal here. Right. And so now we have our first reading of 65. Um, the normal reading for this, you're looking for something typically between 55 and 75. And what you're doing is, you know, the, the NEARS itself is indicated for patients who, you know, may have a brain injury or um, you're concerned about the oxygen consumption in their brain. So you can kind of think of this more like along the lines of a mixed venous SAT. So your goal is 55 to 75. So we're kind of right where we need to be here. Um, the other thing is that the monitor itself comes with a brick that can connect to our Philips monitor. So to connect that, you just would plug it in like you would any other brick um, and go ahead and hit the view link option. And what this does is it'll allow you to bring it up on the monitor here itself, um, but uh, it won't transfer into power chart. You'll still have to go into your flow sheet, select the mirrors as an option, and then, and then transfer the information from the monitor into power chart. Um, we have that, so this comes up, and we should be, so we have here, sorry, our nearest monitor um, value, so just something that you can, in case you aren't able to see it on the screen, you can see it on your Philips monitor. Um, if you have any um, concerns about, you know, the values that you're getting, or, you know, what actions to take based on your nearest value, value there's actually an algorithm too on the um, internal website 
um, that can kind of lead you down, you know, your appropriate clinical steps, as well as other information on troubleshooting the device itself.